And here we go. Uh, this year, I thought it would be interesting to introduce a um, relatively new database that we have, Africa Development Indicators. It's actually not really new because we have published it as a book, as a little data book, and as a CD for a number of years. But really bringing it online meant that uh, people could get much more access. So we consider it new, even if it's not. Uh, strangely, it was a database that nobody knew very much about, and it was amazing uh, the moment we brought it online how much access uh, we got. But let me first uh, say a few words about uh, the World Bank, just a very brief introduction, because I'm pretty sure that in the course of your studies or activities you uh, have learned a lot about it. But the World Bank is one of the largest development institutions in the world. It was uh, uh, established in 1945 uh, as one of the Bretton Woods institutions, the other one being the IMF, to help reconstruction of uh, war-torn Europe. And uh, of course, relatively soon, because uh, in part because of the introduction of other development assistance programs for reconstruction of Europe, including, for example, the Marshall Plan, um, the World Bank realized that uh, uh, it had to focus also on other needs in other parts of the world, and that's how it started to focus on uh, development in uh, the poorest countries uh, in the world, including, of course, uh, Africa. Um, I'm, I'm Valentina Kalk. I work in the publications department of the World Bank. Uh, we operate like like an academic press, in a sense. We have about 150 publications every year, and we manage these uh, statistical uh, databases that Denise already, already mentioned, and I'm responsible for uh, e-publishing and electronic development. So, as I mentioned, the Africa Development Indicators is a suite of uh, three products right now. Uh, the book, which uh, is uh, partly statistical and partly monographic, it comes out every year. The topic of this year is youth and employment in Africa. Uh, we also have a little data book that is basically a, um, an abridged version of the most important data on Africa and uh, the Africa Development Indicators online. Uh, so it's an annual publication. The online version we regard it as the most comprehensive database on Africa with uh, more than uh, 1,400 indicators. And we have added many from last year. Last year we had about 1,000 and we added 400 this year. And uh, uh, some variables go back to 1965, so they give quite a um, long-term picture of uh, uh, of Africa. And uh, the data sources are various. And of course we try to normalize them and we try to just double check them when we receive this data. And they can be from the offices of national statistics, they can be our own World Bank data, we get data from the IMF, from the UN system, from different type of surveys, uh, a database called Doing Business, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, um, and, and other World Bank managed databases, or of course we get data from, from the countries themselves. Um, oh, oh, let's see. Okay, great. Uh, 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 today I just wanted to give you some examples of the questions that Africa Development Indicators can answer. These are uh, important and relevant questions. So, um, for example, uh, if you want to know what countries were the best and worst performers in children under five year mortality present a change between 1990 and 2004, you will discover that the top eight uh, possibly surprisingly, are Cape Verde, Comores, Algeria, Eritrea, Tunisia, Morocco, Libya, and Egypt. And the bottom eight are Botswana, Zimbabwe, perhaps not surprisingly, Swaziland, perhaps not surprisingly, Cote d'Ivoire, but Kenya is surprising, Equatorial Guinea, probably not, Rwanda, and Central African Republic. And uh, I must say, uh, here, um, the, the uh, Africa Development Indicators online uh, covers uh, 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 through 2006 this year, but I won't tell you all the troubles that I had with my computer, so I had to limit my search to 2004. My computer didn't uh, was very temperamental in these days while I was preparing, so anyway, but we have data until 2006. Or, for example, an interesting question could be uh, thinking of uh, uh, foreign investment in uh, um, or domestic investment in Africa, whether there is a relationship between the cost to start a business and the domestic investment as share of GDP. And uh, you might think there is, and surprisingly from this graph you see that there, 
there is not necessarily, for example, look at Lesotho, look at uh, Sao Tome, or look at Sierra Leone. These are um, very uh, meaningful examples. Um, if you are interested in knowing uh, more about uh, uh, official current transfer receipts in, uh, in Ethiopia, you see how they uh, changed and uh, grew in time. Or public spending on education as, per as a percentage of GNI in 1998. Let's assume I want to, to, to write something on, uh, on that particular year. And uh, this is, by the way, a graph as the previous ones that you can draw from Africa Development Indicators. You select your data, you can download them in Excel or CVS, and you can create your own graphs and charts. And you see that, uh, hmm, uh, interestingly, Zimbabwe spent a lot on education in 1998, uh, but, uh, and you see that another country that uh, uh, spent quite a lot is uh, Lesotho. And, and so you can get a lot of interesting information, sometimes surprising, that uh, allows you really to, uh, to get important data for your research on uh, uh, topics on development in Africa. Or if you want to know more about agriculture uh, data, um, for example, you want to know if there is a correlation between uh, uh, GDP and GDP per capita and uh, countries that have that are strongly agriculture based, and uh, you can see that some of them are uh, much poorer than uh, than others. The poorer here is uh, poorest here is Ethiopia, and uh, the the richest seems to be uh, Cameroon. And all these countries uh, have uh, agriculture share of GDP between 25 and 50 percent, and annual exports of agricultural goods uh, that are at least 100 million. And here is the graph that you can draw from uh, from the database. And you can also map these countries. Um, other, um, well, this year we decided to put together some uh, uh, facts you may, may not have known about Africa. We put together 50. I thought I should give you just a quick overview this, uh, today and not give you all the 50, because otherwise we would be here until noon, probably. But um, between 2000 and 2006, the average GDP per capita growth in sub-Saharan Africa was 2%, which is not little up from minus 0.7% in the decade 1990-1999. So it seems that Africa is growing. Uh, the GDP of Sub-Saharan Africa in total was uh, 744 US dollar, billion US dollar. Uh, and this is equivalent to 28% of China's GDP, 69% of Brazil's, 74% of Russia's, and 80% of India. Uh, again, probably an unexpected uh, value here. Um, the economies of South Africa and Nigeria uh, basically comprise 56% of Sub-Saharan Africa's GDP. So um, you can really see who are the drivers of the uh, Sub-Saharan African's economy. Um, Equatorial Guinea has the highest GDP per capita, while the Democratic Republic of Congo has the lowest one with only $91 per capita. Um, you can also get data on uh, population, on uh, uh, education, children and youth, and uh, you discover that 43% uh, uh, of Sub-Saharan Africa population is between the ages of 0 and 14 years old. Uh, in Uganda, the population seems to be particularly young because you have nearly 50% of the population aging between 0 and 14. And Mauritius seems to be the older population with only 24% of uh, the population between uh, in that range, 0 to 14. Um, children and youth start work very early. A quarter of children age, uh, age 5 to 14 work, and among children aging 0 to uh, 14, 31% uh, uh, are estimated to work. Many women are married very young, before the age of 24, but in certain countries they get married much earlier. In Mozambique, nearly 50% of the females were already married before the age of 19. And you can see also in other countries, in Chad, it was also nearly 50%, same in Guinea, in Mali, in Sierra Leone, and in Niger, 62%. Um, when you wonder um, 
what is the, the women's component of the workforce, you can discover that uh, Burundi has the highest participation rate, uh, while Sudan has the lowest. I'm already done. It